morning. Don't say a word. I wasn't going to. Something wrong? No, no, nothing. I thought we paid this ages ago. Ah, yes, sterile surgical supplies, checks and post. It's a final demand. Uh, yeah, but that's what everyone does, you see. You uh, pay at the last moment, and that way the interest accrues in our account and not in theirs. I don't think Kate operated in quite the same way. The last thing we need to acquire is a reputation as late payers. No, no, of course not. So you do have the practice finances in hand, like you said? Trust me, Helen, you're a doctor. No, I know we're responsible for any financial cock-ups while Kate's away, and, and I wouldn't wish to endanger our jobs. Just pay it. It's swimming today. Don't forget these. I hate swimming. But you could at it, just like your mum was. Oh, was she? She learnt when she was four, on holiday, just like you. Come on, you'll be late for the doctor's appointment. I'm not ill. Nobody's saying you're ill, my love. So why are you making me go and see the doctor then? Your dad just wants you to have a little chat with Dr Thompson. It's nothing to worry about. Do I look worried? No, you look like a sulky little madam. Who the hell is he? Why don't you leave a message? And say what? Stick to mowing lawns and keep your nose out of my career? Not exactly the words I'd have chosen. So I'm meant to be grateful now. Whose side are you on? You know how hard it is for a woman to be taken seriously in this profession. And the last thing any of us needs is for some silly man to go behind our backs playing the caped crusader. OK, he shouldn't have tracked that woman down. But it worked. Yeah, negligence dropped. But it was a breach of patient confidentiality. His interference could have meant I was struck off. That could have happened anyway. But it would have been all my own doing, not his. Pete's always been there for you. Just don't do anything rash. I'm doing court this morning. It was your idea to make the doctor's appointment. What, and you don't approve? Erin's growing up a little quicker than other eight-year-olds. It's hardly time to call in the medical profession. She's sulky, moody, her skin's breaking out in spots. All perfectly normal. Yeah, in a teenager. She's your daughter. Erin! Time to go now. Come on, Daddy's going to be late. Oh, look, I'm sorry, but I. I think that's how you need to go to A&E with that. Oh, come on. I'm registered here. Yeah, but that's not the point. I'll be waiting hours if I go to hospital. What's happened? I was ripping out an old kitchen. And I caught it on a nail. Hmm. You'll need stitches in that and a tetanus. But it's not as bad as it looks. Katrina, can you tell Faith I need her help? All right, just sit down for a second. I thought it was policy to send all accidents to A&E. Let me make the medical decisions, please, Katrina. I'll just get faith for you. She'll have a decent scar to show off. Much more macho than a tattoo. I've already got a tattoo. Really? Would you like me to show you? Tempting, but I think I'll pass on that one. 
Faith, can you prepare the tetanus for me, please, while I stitch Carl on? I think I can manage that. Thank you. A pleasure. Sit properly, darling. My, uh, my mother-in-law thinks I'm worrying unnecessarily. Well, you're bound to get anxious. You're Erin's sole carer, aren't you? My gran looks after me. But I work such long hours, you see. Erin's grandma's been fantastic. We share the responsibility. So how can I help? Well, over the last year, Erin started to behave like an adolescent. Don't talk about me like I'm not here. She's moody. She spends all her time poring over pinups in magazines. I bet you like S Club 7. Answer Dr. Thompson, darling. They're all right. And how are you physically, Erin? Fine. And what about school? Do you enjoy it? Boring. Well, she looks so much older than the other girls. Well, I've got no worries at all about you. You look like a very healthy girl to me, but I'd like to refer you to a paediatrician just to rule out any medical causes, OK? Erin, why don't you wait in the waiting room while I talk to your dad? Guess so. Try not to pass your anxieties on to Erin. It's the last thing a child needs. I just want to make sure I'm doing the best for my daughter. Not letting anything pass me by. Erin's mother died a few years ago, didn't she? Yeah. It can be nerve-wracking being a single parent. Harder than being a lawyer. But I think I agree with your mother-in-law. Erin's a perfectly normal, healthy girl who just happens to be growing up quicker than a father would like. Right. Uh, sorry, the nail must have gone in a bit deeper than I thought. It's all right, it won't take long. Just as long as I'm back on the job this afternoon. You'll need to rest this on. For a day, at least. I don't want it to put my feet up at a satin a &E all day. Johnson, get the map! Johnson, the map, now! No! No! You can carry on now, Bill. You can carry on now, Bill. Mark. Mark. Mark? Hmm. They must have gone in a bit deeper than I thought. What did he say, Doc? So I was worrying over nothing. I'm sorry, Doc. So there's really nothing wrong with me? No. It's your favourite lesson this afternoon, isn't it? You know I hate swimming. It was Daddy's little joke. Stop talking to me like I'm a little baby. Well, you are my baby. Bye, then. take your call right now but do please leave a message and I'll call you straight back. Pete, it's me. Just keep your nose out of my business in future. That's if we have any future, okay? Did you bring my swimming costume to stay? No, I left it at home. I don't know if you want to kiss. Is there something you'd like to tell me, Erin? I forgot my costume. I see. So what are you going to do now? Sit and watch. No, you're going to borrow one of my spares that I keep for just such an occasion. <laughs> you should have seen the look on the patient's face. He didn't know where the needle was going to end up. Oh, it couldn't just be your overactive imagination, could it? Because Mark dumped me after having his wicked way with me. Oh, you read my mind. Give me credit for a little professionalism. So you're saying that our Dr. Elliot has got some kind of needle-related neurosis? 
No, it was a car backfiring that set him off. He went off into his own little space and, and he wasn't a happy one. But you're not going to say anything to Mac about this, are you? No, I'll talk to Mark first, find out what he's got to say for himself. Oh, I get it. You're going back for more, aren't you? This is work, not pleasure. No, not too good, actually. It's happened again. Yes, I'd like to talk. When? OK, go! Lovely strong strokes there in. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> right. I want you all to tread water. I'm timing you. Let's see if you can manage five minutes. <laughs> miss! Miss! Something... I can't do it! I've got a cramp! OK, get out of the water. Come on, girls, help her out. She's bleeding. She cut herself. The rest of you carry on. What's wrong, miss? Don't worry, Erin. Let's go and phone your dad. He'll be at work. Your daughter's fine, Mr Lang. She just had a bit of a shock. I'd rather not go into details on the phone. Very well. Erin has started menstruating. I think she needs to be with her family right now. Thanks, Ray. Hello, Kate. Oh, if you've come to see Mac, I'm afraid he's at lunch. Oh, that's no problem. I'll go and have a chat with Helen. It's good to see you. And you. Staying long. Do you mind? No, not at all. Not at home with your feet up? No. Mm. Why she wants to come in here when she could be at home cuddling you, I don't know. Mm. He is gorgeous, isn't he? But? I've been to look at a nursery today. Oh, it's just for a couple of days a week. It helps him to socialise at an early age. I'm the last person you need to explain yourself to. I feel so... Catholic guilt kicking in. It's only for a couple of days a week. It'll do you both good. Yeah, it will, won't it? And, and I can get back to work, keep up with the accounts. Escape the house. <sighs> it's driving me crazy. That should make things clearer, darling. We'd love to have Kate's financial brain back behind the desk, wouldn't we, Katrina? Shh, I haven't said anything to Mac yet. Well, I was just looking at um, online banking, actually. I think we ought to open up an internet account for the surgery. What? Well, you can pay the bills in seconds. You can set up an overdraft online. An overdraft? Well, not that we need one, of course. Good. Spent a long time building up a relationship with our bank. I know the manager. He's been very sympathetic. You wouldn't open up a new account without checking with the partners, would you? Uh, hello? Oh, uh, yeah, you, um, you should receive it any day now. Uh, no, no, I understand. No, no, it won't happen again. Thank you, then. Bye. It was a personal thing. 
Hello. This is Social Call. Yes. Well, actually, no, not, um, not totally. She needs you to talk to her, not a blasted book to read. I just thought it would make it easier for her, you know. Make her less embarrassed about it. Are you sure it's not you who feel embarrassed? Erin is very special to me, Donald, you know that. But there are some things that have to come from a parent. If you were so sure she was an early developer, why didn't you talk to her about menstruation? Because, as you have reminded me so often in the past, I'm not her parent. You are. I'm going to take her back to Dr Thompson, see if she can't give Erin something to delay her periods. She's too young, Grace. You can't go messing with her body. But I'm sure I've read an article about it somewhere. We'll see about that. He's too young to leave with strangers. Mac, it's just a couple of days a week in the care of professionals. You've been waiting for ages to take care of a baby. Yes, but I need to take a look at the finances. You know, I can do both. The modern mother. Yes, actually. Well, I would have thought work would be the last thing on your mind. Mac, I've spent ages building things up here. I can't just forget about work just like that. And I think Katrina's behind with the accounts. Helen and Katrina are coping. Look, if a new mother came to you and said they wanted to get out of the house for a wee while, you'd be the first to suggest a nursery. Look, if you want to get out of the house, there are plenty of baby mother groups around. Oh, great. A couple of coffee mornings a week. That's really supposed to stimulate me. Kate, he needs you. Don't make me feel more guilty than I already do, Mac. You're new to this, that's all. I know, and I need a break. Just give it a few more weeks, eh? Hmm? Come on. Come on, answer. This is Pete. I can't take your call right now, but do please leave a message and I'll call you straight back. Pete, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Are you deliberately trying to ignore me or what? I would like to know. Bye. You have one message in mailbox one. Pete, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Are you deliberately avoiding me or what? I would like to know. Bye. Katrina, it's addressed to me, but it's actually for me. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. Here you go. I'm finishing this off at home, OK? Good luck. Cheers. He'll need it. Bye, then. It's really not as unusual as you'd imagine, an eight-year-old starting her periods. Perfectly natural. I read a recent health study that said menstruation was occurring in as many as one in six eight-year-olds. Good grief, what's the reason for that? Well, it could be um, better nutrition or lack of exercise, but more likely it's an increase in the levels of the female hormone oestrogen in the food chain. But as long as you're well informed about the changes that are happening to your body... I bought her in a book. A book? But I still think she's too young. I mean, it's a lot to cope with. Erin seems emotionally mature for her age. She is. But if it really is a problem for Erin, if she feels she stands out at school, then you could talk to the paediatrician about the possibility of using regular hormone injections. Endocrinologists recommend Luparelin, which can delay the progression of puberty. Really? When can she start? You can't pump the girl with drugs. Not drugs, a hormone. Uh, could you two wait outside for a minute? Maybe I could clarify a few things for Erin. What happened earlier, Mark? Oh, I'm sorry, Faith. I thought I explained myself to you. I'm talking about when you were stitching that man's arm this morning. He did all right, didn't he? We? Oui. I know I did. I'm not so sure about you. It was a couple of stitches. It was hardly brain surgery. You frightened the patient. Did I? You had a blackout or a fit or... You probably know better than me what it was. The patient was at no risk. How would you know? You were on another planet. What are you talking about? So there's nothing you want to share with me? Nothing at all.
You said if I feel like I stand out. Yes. Well, I do. I'm different. Because of the way you look? Yeah. Is there something else? I've no mum. I know. But you've got a very caring father and grandma. Yeah, but mum would have stopped me looking like a freak in the pool. You're not a freak, Erin. And not even your mother could have predicted that you'd have started your periods early. All the other girls laugh at me. You'll soon find they all want to look like you. Yeah, but what about now? I can't wait for them to catch me up. I feel like the naughty boy has been expelled from class. And I'm your sidekick. Except that uh, we're never on the same side. We both want what's best for Erin. Which always seems to be different things. Not true. You think I've persuaded Sarah to do the wrong thing, don't you? Sarah chose to have chemotherapy. You didn't make her. I encouraged her. You did what you thought was best for my daughter. And now you're doing the same for Erin. I'm frightened of her growing up too. She's like my second daughter. But it's going to happen sooner or later. I suppose so. George, come back in. Erin would like to talk to you. Don't shoot. Don't you dare joke. I don't want to stick out anymore. It can be a good thing to be different. You don't want to be different. You get to wear a suit and a tie, just like your workmates. True. I know I can't make my chest go flat, and I can't get rid of my hairs, but I can stop this happening every month. I don't want it. The hormone won't reverse the changes that have happened in Erin's body, but the luperellin will stop her bleeding every month. Like I said, you need to talk to a paediatrician, and we need your consent. As long as it's safe. We both want what's best for Erin. What do you think, Gran? We want you to be happy, my love. We could try Erin on the treatment until she's ten, and then we'll reassess. Some of her friends might be going through puberty by that stage. You'll be able to tell them all about it. Or I can lend them a book. <laughs> well, I was trying to do the right thing. You were. But I think these books on growing up are best read in conjunction with a parental chat on the facts of life. All I could think about was helping you. Oh, that's very sweet. But I'd prefer it if you'd save your brain power for planning gardens. It was none of your business. You made it my business by confiding in me. I told you about the missing house call for emotional support. Not so you could go and snoop around behind my back and go and track the family down. Did you and Karen Chambers have a good old chinwag about my incompetence? No, I told her how it was my fault that you didn't visit a son at home. That you're wonderful. Did you catch that? He thinks I'm wonderful. You don't believe it, do you? No, neither do I. Let's leave the neighbours out of this. Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought maybe you'd want to share my business with them too. Come inside, I'll get you a drink or something, yeah? Only because I've not finished yet. I read to you. Or uh, are you too old for fairy tales now? I've been too old for them for years and it still hasn't stopped you reading them to me. Okay, okay. What about the one where the duckling turns into a swan? <laughs> I like that one. I'm sorry I've been so grumpy. Well, I'm sorry I've acted. Well, like a dad. Perhaps I could try being more like a mum in the future. Hmm? Come on, June. Sit down, have some wine. Don't tell me what to do. 
I'll stand, then. Some people might say a thank you was in order. You arrogant sod. Jude, it's all over. You're a free woman. And all because of you. Hasn't it sunk in yet? I trusted you. Trusted me? Yes. Is something I said amusing? I'm just surprised to hear you lecture me on trust. I trusted you to know that I can handle my own problems, that I value my independence. What, that you don't need a man around? Yeah. Does that go for ex-husbands too, or just me? Oh, don't bring Richard into this. Why not? There is nothing between me and Richard. Of course not. He's just another of Jude Carlyle's exes. Someone you keep on the back burner just in case you and I don't work out. Well, we're not likely to know, are we? I suppose not. He gets the heave-ho for sleeping around. I get the boot for trying to help you. You figure that one out. You're the one that called the wedding off, not me. Can you blame me? You go into all the gory details about how you and Richard were hot stuff in the sack, and then I find the two of you together. Oh, yeah. You caught us red-handed, having a conversation standing outside my house, and, in fact, I was telling him where to go. Not the best reason for calling off an engagement. A pathetic one. I never wanted to call it off in the first place. And you think I did? Yes, I did. I just thought I'd get in there first. 